night shooting pro is clay shooting under the arc lights in Kent. I could get addicted to this, I'll tell you. We have a dedicated Browning user, Josh Bridges, runner-up at the recent CPSA Awards for Clay Shooter of the Year. And he's talking about why he uses the gun he does. Welcome to Clay Sports. It's the first time we have wheeled out the infrared camera for clays. But to get the full picture of this evening's action at the Dartford Clay Shooting Club, we need it. It's, it's totally different to anything you'll ever shoot. Over the winter months, managers Kelly and Scott have been opening the gates and putting on the floodlights. We've done probably three or four of these now. We tried it out, people liked it, so we decided to do more. Tonight we've got a hundred people booked in. It's the quietest night we've had so far full of floodlight. Obviously because we had to start a bit later because of the light. But yeah, no, really enjoying it. Phil Gray is showing a bit of flair for the style of shooting and is building a good score with the first 25. Following on is Andy Crow's squad. It's Andy's first stab at this and it's got his juices flowing. That's totally different. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Okay. I'll tell you, like a drug this. I could get addicted to this, I'll tell you. Why go clay shooting during the day and shoot it like this? This is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And when you talk about the Olympic boys, background is so important. You've got no background here. No, you haven't. It ain't made no difference to me. I do a lot <laughs> of duck shooting at night and that, or in the evening, low lights. So it, it, I think it's paid dividends a bit. But no, I love it. Whether it is a different challenge or a good way of maintaining a competitive edge over the winter months, it's getting the thumbs up all round. At night you've got no uh, depth perception or anything like that. Does that improve your scores? Nope. Doesn't improve them at all. Makes it a lot harder. It's probably twice harder than what it would be during the day. But aren't there better ways to spend a Saturday night? Perhaps taking in not the playground floodlights, but the social bright lights of Dartford. It's a lot better than going Dartford clubs. <laughs> if you've been out in Dartford. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, someone who isn't quite old enough to know about that sort of thing is Tristan, Kelly's 12-year-old son, who hits the competitive circuit for the first time this year. It's different because uh, you've got no background unless like where you've got uh, the Dartford bridge. So like you've got kind of a light and uh, it brings all the good shots down with everyone else. So it's a bit of a level up. Yeah. Sensibly the targets are flash clays supplied by the Clay Pigeon Company, fired by Laporte traps. Duncan from CPC is trying to beat his score from last time. Kelly's invited me a couple of times before and shot it, it's really enjoyable. The fact that it's at night gives it a bit more pizzazz. Um, you know, we've, we supply the flash clays as well from the Clay Pigeon Company, so they work really well and you know when you've hit them. Um, but yeah, it's just, just good to get out and have a good laugh really, that's what it's all about. Phil Gray has put in a score for people to chase, so what's his advice for someone wanting to compete under floodlights? I change my style completely, I shoot total swing through at night and just blot out and pull the trigger, you know. Things that are looking 50, 50, 60 yards away are only actually 25, 30 yards and people are just giving stuff so much lead and it's, I just stood behind Andy and he's like miles in front and then he realised what he was doing luckily. But yeah, you do change a lot. It's quite hard to come from this then to go back to shooting at daytime to be fair, but it's great fun. Just posted out 20 metres to number three, where the number three marker is and it's 40 metres to where the number four clay comes over. But the sand in there looks like it's 55 plus, but it's not. It's just the way the light is shining on it makes it look harder than it is. So I should be back up in, during the day to have a play, and um, next time they do uh, the night one, I should be here. One thing Phil does that not everyone will be happy with is to take the risk of shooting without his glasses on. Yeah, the, the, the light's behind you. I don't know what it is, but you get a glare. It doesn't matter what lenses you've got. I've got most pillar lenses and I've tried them all from the, the lightest of the 99 
down to a, a, a 22 and whatever I use I get a glare off so I just risk it and use no glasses, yeah. And tell me about your score this evening, how did you fare? I shot 67, I had a bit of a meltdown on loud tower, I shot 24, 19, 24. Uh, again, I just, I made the mistake of giving something lead I thought it wanted and it was a country mile in front. When the scores are counted, Phil is joint runner-up with James Smith on 67, with Ben Hollenby winning it with 70. If you fancy testing your night skills, the next floodlit shoot at Dartford is on the 11th of February. Visit dartfordclayshootingclub.com or you could always go clubbing. Crow, as usual, enjoying himself there. Now we have Roundup with news about upcoming clay events. Ed Ling won Clay Shooter of the Year at the 6th Annual CPSA Awards. Other award winners include Clay Sports regular Cheryl Hall for Development Initiative of the Year, Amy Eastman for Young Shot of the Year and Grand of the Year went to EJ Churchill. All the results are on cpsa.co.uk. The final of the Sunseeker Boodles Cup will be held on the 8th of February at Royal Berkshire Shooting School. One lucky winner will take away £80,000 worth of Boodles jewellery, a luxury yacht charter from Sunseeker London or a cheque for £5,000 from Royal Berkshire Shooting School. Fithask has opened registrations for some of its major championships in 2017 and more will follow. These include the World Compact Sporting and World Universal Trench in France, the World Sporting in Hungary and the European Sporting at Rollworth in the UK. Visit fitask.com. And there is plenty of shooting action coming up this weekend at the British Shooting Show. It will be held at Stony Park in Warwickshire on the 10th to the 12th of February 2017. Visit shootingshow.co.uk. Now, I recently met up with Josh Bridges, who is a dyed-in-the-wool browning shooter. He tells me why. Josh Bridges won runner-up at the 2017 CPSA Clay Shooter of the Year to round off a remarkable 12 months for the young sporting shot. In 2016, he won champion junior at the World Compact Sporting Championship. Speaking on a noisy afternoon at Coniston Clayground in Yorkshire, here is how he tackles the high tower. Um. Well, on a high tower bird, I uh, match the speed, maintain my lead, and then um, the amount of lead I put on is the height of the bird and the speed of the bird. Before you go on the stand, I normally judge where the line is going. Um, you can normally tell the bar um, which way the trap's facing, if you can see the trap, but normally it's the correct way to watch before you go on. So I, I try to go around as many different grounds as I can to experience all the different birds that diff each ground have different birds to show. For Josh, a Browning sponsored shooter, a lot of it is down to the gun. I use a 725 Pro Trap. Um, I tried uh, uh, Ultra XS, um, a Browning Sporter, that's one. Um, uh, Ultra XD. And then I tried the Pro Trap and uh, I preferred the Pro Trap than the other ones. I just, well, when I tried it, I fell in love with it the first time I tried it. Um, it's got a nice big stock and it's very well balanced. Um, I put two, two mils on the stock and eight grams of stock weight in. Um, it just it felt even better. In the browning box, it comes with their own little 20 grams of weights, so you can do it yourself. Uh, well, every time I shoot it, it feels nicer. <laughs> uh, I've shot it a lot. Uh, and, yeah, it just, every time I shoot it, it just feels the same. Thanks to Browning for sponsoring this piece and to Coniston Shooting Ground for hosting us. That's it for Clay Sports this week. We're back in a month. We'll see you then.